many of y'all know you're a spirit? Everyone say, I'm a spirit. I'm on an earth suit. It's the only thing that keeps me here. But one day this is going down and I'm going up. So you got to get down to get up, right? That takes humbleness, not pride. Pride goes up and you're the end, down. <laughs> so the Lord, humble yourself in the mighty hand of God. Did you get touched this morning already? Get convicted? Don't raise your hands. It's okay. Because we're a spirit in a flesh suit. We have a soul that communicates. It's the only way things can get converted. See, if your soul doesn't get converted, you can't interpret what God says. And you have a body that operates in this realm. Amen? So we're a spirit, soul, and body. But in this, your spirit communes with God through the whole, in the Holy Spirit. But if your soul's not converted, you ain't going to understand what God says. Does everybody get it? See, you'll try and interpret through emotion or through the flesh. When the soul reaches a level of conversion, you ain't going back. But see, the enemy tries to steal everything. That's why the Bible says when the word is preached, the devil comes to what? Steal. Listen, he just doesn't come one time, you know. Hello? The Bible says we're, he, the powers of darkness set traps for us every single day. So you're not only fighting the powers of darkness, but you're battling your own flesh that has a memory. Hello? Associated with demonic activity. Associated with the world. Is everybody okay? Praise God. Let's, let, let's go somewhere this morning. One of the things that people begin to lose sight of, and some people don't even know yet, what they're fighting, what they're battling. You know, your battle's not physical. Amen? Actually, your battle is emotional. That's what a battle is. It's emotional. And emotional does things what it feels like. In fact, Satan's doctrine is do what you feel like. Well, I think I feel like doing this without acknowledging God. So people fall into traps all the time. Well, this is what I feel like out of divine order. Ahead of God, behind God, you know. Amen? So what's happening now is, you know, it's our responsibility to make the, what's unseen to become seen. But let's talk about the unseen enemy. Because there are many. Mark 16. 16. He who believes. What's the word believe mean? Follow. See, you're going to run into a lot of people saying they believe. I'm a believer. But they really don't. You're going to run into a lot of people that say they love you and they're your enemy and don't even know it. I love you. No, you don't. People use that word so they just throw it around. Oh, I love you. Then they turn you around and stab you in the back, lie to you, cheat. That's not the God's love. That's carnal love, worldly love. It's called lust, not love. That's a manipulation love. So the word believe means to follow. Now you've got to understand something. This is what God looks at. So many people are going to come to him and say, but Lord, I believe. But he said, you never followed me. Bye. Your place is in hell, not with me. Hell is expanding every single day right now. He who believes and is baptized will be what? Saved, rescued, restored. But he who does not believe or follow will what? Be condemned. Or where are you going to be condemned? You ain't condemned in heaven. Amen? You're condemned where? In hell. And these signs will follow those who follow me. In my name they will do what? Oh, snap. They will cast out what? 
demons. Demons. It's the first thing Jesus said to them. You're going to cast out what? Demons. What's a demon? A disembodied spirit. It comes from the fallen angel and human when they became one flesh. Angels put on flesh when the women had produced offsprings, became giants. The, the Lord killed the, all of them with the flood when then their bodies, their spirits now became demons. So they live a life of lust. And they need a human host to deceive everyone. That's how they get fed. They need a body. But I'm a Christian. I don't care who you are. You can have a demon or be loaded with them, even as Christians. Does everybody understand this? Look at Jesus when casting out demons of believers. Amen? Hallelujah. They will speak with new tongues. Hallelujah. They'll be baptized in the Holy Spirit with fire and tongues of fire. They'll speak another language that speaks directly to God that the devil can't understand. And you don't understand. Because the devil knows exactly what you think. Well, he can't read your mind. Baloney. He knows exactly what you think. He reads everything you think. And he's going to try to interrupt and interfere with it. Does everybody understand? He tries to reason with you. How many have anybody ever talked to yourself? Do you ever wonder who you're talking to? So she wanted says, Oh, just one more hit. One more drink. I'm all right. Oh, he'll forgive me, she'll forgive me. All that reasoning stuff that the enemy loves to play with. If he can get one more piece of meal from you, because they get fed by emotion. Demons, disembodied spirits, that's what you battle with. And when you stop thinking about that, you begin to drift. You lose sight of who you are. Because we're a spirit. We're temporary in this realm. But God sent you, chose you, predestined me and you to come here at this time, at this moment. To battle against the powers of darkness and rescue as many souls as possible. Listen, you didn't get saved for no reason. You didn't get saved just to get reconciled to your family. You got saved to serve the king. Does everybody get it? That's why you were saved. And if you're not willing to follow him, then you're going to follow the devil. It's one, one or the other. Glory. And these signs will follow them who follow me. In my name, they'll cast out devil. They'll get new language. They'll take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, by no means serve them. It doesn't mean you're going to tempt God. Amen. You're going to go siphon gas and drink it. or you know, I'm going to test God on this one. You're going to die, <laughs> dummy. And you will lay hands on the sick. And they will recover in the process of time. Not a miracle is instant, but there's a process of time where people will be healed. Amen? Everybody okay? See, to take up serpents is to take dominion over demonic entities. Resisting harmful attacks, laying hands on the sick by faith, and they will recover. Unseen enemies. Luke 4, verse 40. It says that when the sun was setting, all those who had any that were sick with various diseases brought them to Jesus. And he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. You know, when Jesus touches you, it's instant. Hello. Boom. Done. Over with. Thank you, Lord. I've been healed multiple times. You can get healed in the presence of God while you worship. But you got to get in his presence. But you can't get in there without poor worship. Verse 41, what does it say? And demons also came out of many, crying out, saying, You are the Christ, the Son of God. And he, rebuking them, did not allow them to speak, for they knew that he was the Christ. Demons came out of them. Hallelujah. 
Demons come out of people when you praise and worship. They'll come off of you. Luke 8, 26. And they sailed to the country of the Gardenias, which is opposite of Galilee. And when Jesus stepped out of, uh, out of the boat on the land, there, he, he met a man. Uh, he met a person there, a man from the city who had demons for what? A long time. And he wore no clothes, nor did he live in a house, but in tombs. But see, now, demons don't like that anymore. They like the people to be dressed up. They like to live in nice houses, drive nice cars. Yeah, men are enjoying life now. It's the people that they're hosting, hello, that's being hosted is having the problems. See, the, de the powers of darkness will prosper you as long as you serve them. Does everybody understand that? Oh. Verse 28. And when he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him. And with a loud voice said, what have I do have to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. <laughs> Jesus didn't say a word. His presence just showed up. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for it had often seized him, and he was kept under guard, bound with chains and shackles. But he broke the bonds and was driven by demons into the wilderness. Jesus asked him, what is your name? And he said, Legion. Legion. Because many demons have entered him. One night my wife and I cast out, a, I think it was a minimum of 33 demons out of a person. I was tired. One almost deceived me. You know what he said to me? Where will I go? I went, huh. Wait a minute, get out. Casting out demons should be the sport of the body of Christ. You don't need archery, go cast out a devil. You don't need the others, go cast out devils, man. This should be the sport. Now listen, and they begged him that he would not command them to go into the abyss. The abyss, the pit. Please don't send us to the pit. There's legions of them. Uh, now, legions are about 2,000. So this person had 2,000 demons. Think about this. I know people that took in years to go through deliverance. Verse 32. Now, a herd of many swine was feeding there on the mountain. So they begged him that he would permit them to enter them. And he permitted them. Then the demons went out of the man, entered the swine, and the herd ran violently down the, the steep place into the lake and did what? They drowned, man. They'd rather kill themselves. Even the pig had smarts. Amen? Now, there is a saying to all of this, but I'm not going to get heavily into this. But... Jesus was reminding those demons where they came from. Remember, their human, their bodies were destroyed in the flood. And where did Jesus send, where did he send them? In back into the water. Remember, I destroyed you, your bodies, and I will come back and destroy you next. Somebody understand that? Oh, Hallelujah. Luke 10. Jesus was still on the earth with disciples. He had the original 12, and then there are many of them that follow. In fact, it's verse 17 said, then the 70 returned. So he sent 70 out with joy, saying they returned back. They said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And Jesus said, yeah, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I kicked his butt out of there. 
Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall be any means hurt you. Nevertheless, don't rejoice in all this power I've given you, and that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Now keep it there. Don't let me, don't cause me to erase your name. Everybody understand? Revelation 12, verse 7. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil, and Satan. Hello, he likes to change his name. Who deceives what? The whole world. Is he still doing that? Yeah. He'll deceive anyone. It doesn't matter whether you're a Christian or not. He doesn't care. He deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Those angels are now principalities. Then I heard a loud voice saying, In heaven now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, the anointed one and his anointing, has come to give the, his people the power to overcome. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame the powers of darkness by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. In other words, they reached an ability to deny themselves, pick up the cross, and follow. Right? So you must deny yourself, pick up the cross. The cross is to battle. It means to fight. Because you can't follow without a fight. Hello? Is everybody Okay. The devil was cast out of the realm of the throne of God. Now he deceives the whole world with doctrines of spirits and demonic forces and lies. and he, he, Whatever he can use to bring people a lie and deception, he will. He plays with people's emotions. He knows exactly how to influence someone. 1 Timothy 4. You know, every one of us has had encounters with demons, either in the mirror, hello, in your room while you slept, somewhere. You could be in your kitchen, all of a sudden you, you could be walking down the hallway and it's like, man, something just, something's following me. You could be choked while you're sleeping. Things can move, the curtains can move, you're thinking, ah, it's in my imagination. No, it's not. They're real. And when you try and tell your family, they think you're nuts. That's the drugs. It's the alcohol effect. Hello? Demons are real and they're active. And they don't care whether you're a believer or not. I've been told that a demon can't take and go into a, a believer. Well, you've been lied to. Just like one saved, always saved. It's a lie, too. That's not dad's doctrine. You better be careful who you serve when you die, where you go. Can you imagine if everybody just lived a life of sin, doing whatever they want? They can, oh, I'm going to heaven. I'm all right. No way. Thank God he's merciful. I believe he visits a lot of people before they go to have to go to hell. In fact, he might even allow them to go to hell and touch a little bit. And he says, come on, get out of here. I forgive you. But would you like to take that chance? You'd be pretty stupid if you did. In fact, the Bible says if you reject correction, you're stupid. That's dumb, crazy, blind. Hallelujah. First Timothy chapter 4, is everybody there? Verse 1, let's speak it together, okay? Now, the Spirit expressly, expressly, expressly. In other words, he's got a huge megaphone. He's trying to tell everybody. That in our latter times, are we in the latter times? 
Some will depart from the faith or following Christ. They'll call themselves believers, but they won't follow anymore. They're going to follow their emotions and desires instead of following the Lord. Giving heed to deceiving spirits. Well, and doctrines of what? Demons. Look at the media. They promote doctrines of demons. They lie. Look at how many people have compromised in the area. Man, we were at a house working one day, doing some construction. And this woman, man, she quotes scripture like crazy. Yeah, I'm a believer. This, 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 this. Oh, the Lord's good, this, that, whatever. And then she's, I, I, and I look, she's got this big stogie marijuana. Oh, I got a marijuana car. Well, you're an idiot. What the heck you doing with that thing? Well, I needed to calm my nerves. You're demonized. And then later she pulled the wine out and the cigarette. And, and she loves Jesus. Call a Christian. Yeah, I believe. No, you don't. No, you don't. It's that compromise. How many people have fallen into that arena, gone to the medical field for help instead of the healer? Don't get me wrong. There's a time when you do. Does everybody okay? Listen, I'm not against taking an aspirin. Somebody, all right. Some people have certain things, but, but man, you know, people are just trying to catch a buzz for an excuse. That's an old addictive behavior. And those cards, those marijuana cards for a believer, if it ain't in true justice and righteousness, it's an accursed item. And it will draw demonic activity. Hello? Hello? The Spirit especially says in the latter times, many will fall into the plays and doctrines of demons and deceiving and, and deception. And they'll speak lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. In other words, our hearts become hardened. Forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. He's saying, man, even those who know the truth are going to be misled, taken captive. 1 Corinthians 10. You're going to get burned by the devil. The devil's going to use you to burn someone else, or you'll eternally burn. So if you don't learn, now learning means you put something into practice. You take it and you use it, and you don't forget it. Verse 19, 1 Corinthians 10, 19, let's speak it together. What am I saying then? That an idol is anything? Or what is offered to idols is anything. Can you become an idol? Verse 20, can we read that together? Rather that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to what? Demons. Demons. People are sacrificing to demons that don't even know. Do you know when you sing the secular demonic music, you're offering a sacrifice to demons? Does everybody get it? That's what kept us in demonic activity when we were in the world. Music. And not to God. And I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. Do you think abortion is a sacrifice to demons? Big time. And if anybody's ever had an abortion, or if you're a, a, a involved as a man with a woman with an abortion, you just need to repent. Put it under the blood. God will forgive. He says, do... You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table or the table of demons. Demons are real. Many unknowingly having fellowship with demons and some knowingly fellowship with demons. Listen, what about people that promote such wickedness? They're having fellowship with demons. Vote for people that are promoting such wickedness. They're promoting demons. They're associating fellowship, not even knowing. What do you think influenced that person to do that? Demons. The Bible says the powers of darkness, the devil blinds the people of the world. Listen, the devil doesn't stop. Either does God. Amen? But he's given us the power to overcome everything. 
we are without excuse. People just become lazy and compromising. They don't maintain their routine. They got a lot of words, but no action. I run into many people, I don't use, I, I don't use drugs anymore. I just drink 16 gallons of liquor every day. Oh, okay, so it's just liquid poop, liquid dope. Yeah, but it's legal. <laughs> That's what kicks me. It's legal. Yeah, it's legal. Yeah. Do you remember when they shut down everything but, but liquor stores? Why? Because they wanted to kill you. Listen, your government hates you. They don't love you. They're ruled by the Babylonian system. The medical people hate you. Not all of them. Don't get me wrong. I mean, there's Christians in the place, but I'm talking about the medical organizations, the pharmaceutical companies. They don't love you. They just want your money. Then they want to keep you addicted. Everything's a pill, right? If you watch any commercials, every other commercial's a pill. You don't feel good, take this. Every time you go to the doctor, they're just trying to put pills on you, aren't they? And what are these pills? Pharmaceutical? Some of it's witchcraft? Black magic? Amen? But there are sincere people out there that want to help. Psalm 106, 34. They did not destroy the peoples concerning whom the Lord had commanded them. But they mingled with the Gentiles and learned their works. They served their idols, which became a snare to them. They even sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demons and shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan, demonic deities. And the land was polluted with blood. Thus they were defiled by their own works and played the harlot by their own what? deeds. Therefore, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against them, so that he abhorred his own inheritance, and he gave them into the hands of the Gentiles, and those who hated them ruled over them. Their enemies also oppressed them, and they were brought into subjection under their hand. Many times he delivered them, but they rebelled in their counsel and were brought low for their iniquity. See, rebellion is witchcraft. Amen? That's being influenced by demonic presence. <laughs> Sacrifice to demons is abortion, murder, you know. Again, singing demonic songs, adultery, fornication, sexual, sex out of marriages, open doors of demonic activity. That's an offering to demons. Idolatry, works of the flesh. Works of the flesh is offerings to demons. First John chapter 3. Verse 7. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the what? Of the devil. Sin is the presence of evil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. He disarmed them. Now it's our responsibility to continue to drive them out. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. For he, his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Again, sin is the presence of evil. The presence of evil is a demonic force. Practicing righteousness is submission to the character of Christ and the expression of his integrity. I'm going to say that again. Practicing righteousness is the submission to the character of Christ and the expression of his integrity. In other words, what you are learning from him, you are expressing. You are living it now. You are exchanging your way of life for a new life. And that new life doesn't stop. 
It continues. It grows. But you got to give God a break, man. Well, it didn't happen the way I wanted it to. I'll give that person a binky. Big one. Cry baby. God's going to do it his way in his time. Why? Because he wants you to deny yourself constantly. He'll bring you to a place of more and more death. The more you die to you, the more he comes. What your hand's in, his not. That's why it says, cast your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Do you know what he, do you think, listen, is there anything God doesn't know? If it is, would you please let me know? I want to write it down. We'll take a sentence on it. What do you think God doesn't know? Can you imagine if you went through the whole world that brought a pad and paper? What do you think God doesn't know? You get a lot of atheists, you know, say, oh, he doesn't know this, no that. Yeah, but when you get in trouble, do you say, oh, God? Yes, you do. You liar, you. James 4. Remember the testimony about the woman with the issue of blood that she had been bleeding for so long and she spent everything she had? And Jesus came in town and everybody was around him and she got on her hands and knees to crawl through. She said, man, if I could just touch his garment, I'll be healed. If I could just press through. See, we do that. There's a place where you you can reach and get healed and be free. But you can't reach it in pride. You have to reach it in humility. She was on her hands and knees. Amen? And when she finally reached, people stepped on her hands, her feet, probably kicking her, getting out of the way. There was a crowd there. She crawled right through. And, she, and then when, Jesus, when she touched his garment, Jesus sensed the draw. She drew the power from him. Does everybody get this? That's why we praise and worship. What are you doing? You're drawing power from him. Does everybody get this? That's why he says forsake not to assemble because you ain't going to draw no power enough by yourself. Hallelujah. James 4 verse 1, let's speak it. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for what? Pleasure. That war where? In your members, your memories, your heart. Amen? You lust and don't have. In other words, lust is a high level of desire. Amen? Addiction is nothing but a lust. It's a high level of desire. And that's from the demonic forces that cause people because they lust. I need it. I want it. I live nothing. Listen, I lived to get high for 20-something years. That's all I lived for. I did it. I spent thousands, man, I snorted enough planes. Thousands and thousands of thousands of dollars of dope. Alcohol, everything else. It's incredible. But you know what? We were looking for God's presence. But we've been deceived by demonic forces. That lust living under satanic torment, because that's all it is. You lust and don't have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you don't ask correctly. You ask and don't receive because you ask amiss so that you can spend it on your addictions, on your own lustful ways, or on your selfish pleasures. He says, you're adulterous and adulteresses. In other words, idols, idolaters. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? See, God took us out of the world so we don't have to act like the world anymore. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace, therefore he says, 
God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. What's grace? God's plan of escape. Therefore, submit to God, submit to God, submit to God. And when you submit to God, and if you submit to God, then you'll be able to resist the devil. Other than that, you ain't going to resist nothing. Those demons of lust will come and take you over again. He says, then he will flee from you. Submit. Resist. Amen? God says, my people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge and knowing these things or keeping them in remembrance. 2 Corinthians 4, 16. Therefore, we do not what? Lose heart. Don't give up. No matter how you feel. No matter what you think. No matter what people say. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, for some of us it seems forever, is working for us for a more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are what? Seen, but the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporary, but the things that are not seen are what? Eternal. Exposure of your unseen enemies and removal of them is our responsibility. We are predestined with authority and power by the Holy Spirit. I want to sh say something. It's our responsibility to put a demand on anointing. Ephesians 6. Cast the devils out of your bed. Hello. They wait for you, man. You having bad dreams? Hello. Get them out of your bed. Search your house through. See if you have any cursed items in them. Are you wearing the cursed items? Break the curses off your tattoos. Does everybody get it? Search out. Make sure you don't have any shirts with demon faces on them. Marijuana things, you know, all the other stuff. Drink at Smokey's house, whatever. Those are demonic shirts. We've had people leave because they wouldn't give up their shirt. Think about that. Can you imagine going to hell for a shirt? Sheesh. Verse 10. Ephesians 6, 10, finally, my brethren, be what? Strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the trickery of the devil. Listen, we've had people that have come, they're still carrying the ashes from their family or accursed items. They got little ashes in their things. Like it's, it's really sentimental. If it is, get rid of it anyways. You don't want to carry anything from the dead. Amen? Especially rosaries. Man, throw those things out. It's an accursed item. Verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Well, then what do we wrestle against? The unseen enemy. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of what? It doesn't say niceness. It says what? Wickedness that kill, steal, and destroy in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. Most people don't even know how to put on the armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the trickery of the devil and because it, it's evil, it's an evil day, and have done to stand all that you can do. That's our, our responsibility, to put on the full armor of God every single day. Amen? This is reality of the real battle. This is what the, is going on in humanity. The powers of darkness are calling us and humans to kill each other. People become addicted, all kinds of pornography, lust, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. Amen? Works of the flesh. What's works of the flesh? Go to Galatians 5, we'll tell you. Galatians 5.19.
Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are what? Adultery. Now these are offerings to demons. Fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery. Well, is using drugs sorcery? Yeah, it's called black magic, witchcraft, and sorcery. Pharmakia. Hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness. Hmm. Revelries and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just also I tell you in time past, that those who practice, practice, and practice, such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So if you're playing that kind of game, you're living that type of life, you're making wrong choices. The Lord says you can't enter in that way. Amen? You can't enter in that way. I can't bring somebody in a discipleship house who's been boozing or drugging all day long and says, yes, I need help today. Sorry, man, you stink. You carry the presence, the presence and the smell of demonic activity. And the people that have been in that house have fought to get clean. I'm not going to bring you in until you at least get cleaned up a little bit. So you don't stink of demonic presence. Does everybody understand that? Not that you don't have demons, but the booze and the cigarettes and all the other stuff, you know. How many of y'all know cigarettes is a cursed item? Well, I don't drink anymore. I don't smoke any. Oh, I smoke. Okay. I smoke six packs a day because I can't drink. Okay, well. You know, a pack of cigarettes is equal to a certain amount of cocaine. Hello. Now, these are the works of the flesh, the character of demonic presence in humans. Say it with me. It is the character of demonic presence in humans. They love to express themselves. And they love to feed each other. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. But now, know this, that in the last days, are we in the last days, perilous times will come. Is there perilous times? If you don't know it, you need to just go out the front door, and when you open it, you'll see perilous times everywhere. You'll hear it, it's in the newspaper, it's this, there, and everywhere. Amen? But know this, in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves. Hmm. Me, myself, and I syndrome. Lovers of money. I mean, that's all, don't you see that all over? I mean, uh, TV, everything. Everything's promoting self and money. Hey, man, you can make a million dollars. Look at here's a check I just made. Five million dollars in 15 minutes. Oh, man, I'll sign right up. People are dumb sometimes in that way. Chasing money instead of chasing God's presence. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Oh, they have a form of godliness and call themselves Christians, but they deny their power of God. Why? Because they do not overcome. He said, from such people turn away. For these are the sort that creep into households, ministries, and businesses, and, and take captives of gullible men and women, loaded down with sins, led away with various lusts, always learning, but never able to be free or come to the knowledge of truth. Does everybody see that? Because they constantly recycle. There's a recycle there. It's not been broke. Why? No maintaining of the routine of their foundation. They compromise. I'm telling you, one compromise will cause a drift, and you won't even know it until it's too late. Then you'll say, how did I get here? Why did I buy this? What am I doing with this kilo of Coke? Trying to make fast money, this, that, whatever. How did I get this? How did I start on marijuana? Man, when I've been free for so many years. Does everybody get this? Then back in the, how many people have gone back in pornography? It's incredible what's going on right now. Again, the powers of darkness are out there, man. The atmosphere is hard. Things are happening. The, the demons are more demons on the earth than ever. 
Why? Because they're conjuring them up. And the things that our people are doing are causing them to come out. Does everybody understand that? Let's go to Hebrews 10. Shaking's going to increase, and we're going to be reaching a valley of decision. And the choices that we make will come back to us for a full year. Listen to what the Spirit says. For a full year of judgment. One full year. September 24th or 5th is Feast of Trumpets. That's the beginning of a new year. That's 5883. I'm going to talk more about this Tuesday. There's a specific meaning for that. It's an area of time to repent, turn things around, make right choices. Because once 5784 comes and you're not right and you're not in a line, there'll be a year of judgment. Hallelujah. Hebrews 10, verse 19. Let's speak it. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure blood. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promises is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Again, the corporate anointing you're drawing from God you can't get that kind of corporate anointing. You can't get that anointing by yourself. The Bible says two or more gather together. He's in the midst. Me, myself, and I ain't going to work. Hello? Don't get me wrong. You can worship by yourself. But there's an area of the level of the anointing, especially where many of us have come from. I know myself living that life of demonic forces for so many years. We need to be in tune and have prophetic insight. Is everybody okay? Look at this. Now, he's telling us this stuff. Why? Because what's the next verse? For if we what? Sin willfully. <laughs> he's saying, man, you're going to blow it. You're going to make a wrong choice if you sin willfully. Well, you cho that choice was your will, not God's will. He's telling us why, because you didn't forsake. You, you kept forsaking assembling. You didn't draw from the corporate anointing. You will make wrong choices. You will compromise. For if we sin willfully after we've received the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. In other words, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot? In other words, he's talking about someone who's accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified, a common thing, and insulted the spirit of grace. How much more punishment do you think there'll be? Why? Not aligning yourself up to work and forsaking to assemble. Two simple things. Of course, then there's a daily routine, amen? And I'm going to close at 1 John chapter 2. Verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the lust, 
and the pride of life or the lust of self. These are the three categories of the unseen. Under these categories is demonic forces. Demonic forces, demons. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, lust of self. It's called pride. That's how they get fed. That's how we flew. These are the three major categories. I mean, we can go out on a list of all the demons associated with them. But we don't have it until Monday. And it's not of the Father, but it's of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God, not the will of man, abides forever. Little children, it is the last hour and you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been with us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. And you know all things. You know everything that pertains to freedom. Amen. Now, we just got to deny ourselves and do it. They want to say, just do it. Once there's a bumper on there, a car said, just do it. Like that. Nike? Oh, that's another demonic company. Hallelujah. Praise God. Everybody okay? Remember, what are you fighting? Demons. 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 Demons, disembodied spirits. Stop looking at each other. Don't get offended. Well, you don't know what they said. Who cares? Who used them? Demon. Somebody get it. Forgive, bless, move on. And get rid of the accursed crap. Amen? Let's wake up, grow up, and kick butt. It's that simple. Come on, begin to fulfill your sport. Amen. You're to be a demon casting outer. Lord, we thank you for your word. We're honored and blessed. You are awesome and mighty and true. And there's none like you, Papa. And you've given us the authority, our power to trample upon the powers of darkness, to cast out devils, lay hands on the sick. I'm asking today, Lord, that you'll complete what your word is said and your promises in each and every one, and that the seeds that were imparted today would bring to remembrance. Holy Spirit, grab hold of each and everyone's heart here, everyone's mind, so that they constantly recognize and bring forth the unseen battle of demonic forces that come against them in all their thoughts. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.